J.B. Portello. I'm standing in today for Jerry Horner. And I would like, we have a couple of really great guests today. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to, you don't need an introduction because Tony's been around so many times, but our president of the Bella Vista Garden Club, Tony Lacasse. Thank you, JB. Yeah, and he's gonna talk to us today about a lot of things. And my additional guest, who is going to be amazing today, his name is Terry Wiederhoff, right? Did yeah. I get close? Close enough. All right. But anyway, um, let, our topic for today is gardening in June, of course, and there's several things we do in June. But today we want to feature something that is really a gem in the eyes of the gardening world, I think, in this area. Uh, it's called Helping Hands Garden. And it's really uh, more about master gardeners. But, you know, Tony and I are master gardeners anyway. Right. Uh, as well as Garden Club members. So we want to tell you about this gem and the plans going forward. Um, so, Terry, my friend, would you like to please give us a little bit of history on on the, uh, Helping Hands and how Master Gardeners got involved and where you're kind of headed with it? Okay. Um, so, um, Helping Hands, you know, has the thrift store, mm -hmm. and they provide a lot of, you know, rental assistance and utility assistance and everything. But they also have a food pantry mm -hmm. there. And um, I think they serve, I think they say, over 100 uh, people a day um, with the, the food uh, handouts that they have. And they, uh, on the piece of property where they are, mm -hmm. There's, um, I think there's five acre lot to the north of the building there. And they had went out, some of the people who work at Helping Hands had went out there five or six years ago, I believe, and had tried to do a little garden plot a couple times. Uh, but the, the soil in that area is not the best yeah. and all that. Be worse than Bella Vista? <laughs> I don't know if it's worse, but <laughs> they, didn't have any, they didn't have much success okay. for whatever reasons. Okay. Um, and so then uh, there was some organization that went on and they actually got uh, one of the big box retailers, I believe, to come out and have a um, volunteer day out on the piece of land they had. And they got 20 raised beds installed. They're very, very nice raised beds that were built uh, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. So they had the beginnings there, but they still were struggling with uh, people to do the gardening. Sure. And um, the one group that had, that had stepped up was the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. And they're a very dedicated group, but they were small. Yes. And they were doing about six beds out there uh, for the last three years, I believe. And um, so there's 20 beds out there total. So uh, they were kind of looking for people to help mm -hmm. uh, to, to utilize the beds they have. And it worked out great in that uh, the master gardeners of Benton County really uh, had kind of been concentrated more on ornamentals and stuff, and we really didn't have a, a vegetable garden right. that we right. managed. So we were looking at the same time that they were looking for people. And um, last March, um, this, we decided it would be a good fit. And like a year ago, March, right? Yeah, excuse yeah. me. A mm -hmm. year ago, March mm -hmm. uh, would be a good fit. So um, we went out. We had a couple of work days out there. We needed to bring in a lot of soil. Um, there was some cleanup uh, that we helped with. We brought, they, they actually didn't even have a, a hydrant at the garden. We got that arranged. So we got it all set up. And then there were, we had 14 beds and it was basically uh, master gardeners volunteered to take a bed mm -hmm. and without a lot of organization uh, we uh, planted you know har weeded watered harvested the beds and everything and we kept track as we were going of how much produce because all the produce 100 percent of the produce goes through the helping hands pantry uh -huh. so and that's great for them because Food pantries, if you look, I mean, it's a lot of canned goods, right. non-perishables, pastas. So this is really their, their source of produce for it. And with uh, the seven-day Adventist help, they, they maintained their beds and ours. 
we got like 2,200 pounds of produce In that summer. short period of time, last, last summer. summer. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to have more this year, aren't we? <laughs> well, um, so we kind of got through it last year. Like, we didn't even start until March last year. So it wasn't a lot of organization. It was just kind of people took it on themselves and went out there and did it. So this year now we've, we've got an organization. I actually have uh, 60 people on my mailing list. Mm -hmm. And probably about 30 of them are really actively involved, and the others come in and out a little bit. So um, last year we had 20 beds. Uh, as of today, we're up to 37 beds. So we wow. put 17 beds in, um, starting basically in February through now. And that's probably going to be it for this year. So what are we raising out there? So last year it was 100% um, of vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. And like our big tomatoes was far and away our big crop. Uh, but we also had a lot of peppers and squash and that uh, type of stuff. This year, one of the uh, things we did in the planning process intentionally was we wanted to uh, get into the berries end of it. So we, we have seven beds uh, planted this year that are, uh, some of them are blueberries, some of them are strawberries. And then additionally, we've got a, a fence row area where we've put in some blackberries. So Ooh. we're going to have all the same vegetables. And this year we probably won't get a lot of berries. It's our first year. Mm -hmm. But starting next year, we should have a lot of berries also. You know, uh, I think you have a pollinator garden out there as well, don't you? Yes. Uh, so and Talk about why that's important. Well, Tony may be <laughs> Tony better help than me. <laughs> but, you know, um, Especially like for tomatoes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it has you, you have to have your bees, you have to have your uh, pollination on that, and and most of the vegetables, uh, it's you you have to have your bees to pollinate the vegetables. So. so Tony, talk to us about why those pollinators are important, even those gross worms that are on the tomatoes. <laughs> they everything serves a purpose. Yeah. But you don't like those very much. No, do I don't you? like those gross right. worms. <laughs> talk talk to us a little bit about the importance well, of pollination. You know, everybody's familiar with bees as pollinators. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, at night while we're all sleeping, those are the bees are the daytime pollinators. Right. At, at night we have moths that are pollinating and uh, so we want to have habitat for them as well nearby. And, uh, and uh, I've had uh, people that, <laughs> I find it amusing, that uh, they say, oh, I have ants in my garden. And yes. uh, ants are pollinators as well. Yes. So uh, evaluate the kind of ants that you have before you extinguish them. Uh, otherwise, your crop may be diminished <laughs> as a result. Uh, so there are many different kinds of pollinators, and, and you know, it's an important part. But another aspect uh, that I think is going to be interesting, the, the, the 20 beds mm -hmm. <clears throat> that they had uh, from last year, not the new 17 that they've added, but they've started an irrigation program now. Yes. And Terry's probably going to tell us more about that. I think the you're going project, to tell us about it. The project has just started. We're, we're laying the, the piping and everything now for a drip irrigation system. So I'm looking for... Uh, that the production on those on those beds per bed to increase. So yes. if that if we yielded 2,200 pounds off 20 beds last year, I'm looking at those same beds could produce 25 or 2,800 pounds, and then the additional 17. Well, especially since somebody doesn't have to go out there with a hose and water those yeah, things exactly. like we had to last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're going to get a deeper, <clears throat> better watering with a drip system than you're going to get with just some topical watering uh, when things are dry. So. so you go out there and work. You're a volunteer there. I do a little bit. I, not as much as I would like. You know, we, uh, being involved with Garden Club, it takes a lot of my time, but uh, uh, I'll be, more, my time will be freeing up shortly, as everybody knows. I'm just rounding up a, a two-year term. But many, you know, the I've got to say this, um, the Bella Vista Garden Club uh, has about uh, 26 or 28 members that are master gardeners. Yes. And uh, and many of them uh, work on Terry's uh, committee there at the Helping Hands Gardens. And uh, I, I'm proud of every one of them. We're, we're proud. Uh, we love this project. Yes. And for what it does for the community as a whole. Uh, 
Um, not only are we raising fresh vegetables and, and Master Gardeners raising fresh vegetables uh, for people who need it, but we're, you know, many of them, we're teaching them how to prepare those foods. A lot yes. of them, uh, believe it or not, don't know what to do with the, something that's not in a can or frozen. Uh, and so we're also teaching that along with it. Well, you know, we're handing out recipes along with the zucchini, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I, I just think, um, and we're also getting young people, and I think you're probably going to touch on that topic. I am, and in too. fact, uh, uh, Terry, <coughs> I understand that there is a really a robust, this year in particular, um, kids program, kids education, and tell us about that. Yeah, so... Like I said, last year we jumped in beginning of March and we grew our vegetables and it was a rousing success. So when we sit down in the fall and started saying, what do we want to do with this going forward? The Master Gardener's Charter pretty much is we're an educational we organization. Yeah. So that was the first thing on our list was that next year we needed to get more formal some sort of teaching program. Mm -hmm. And where we ended up was um, we decided we wanted to put together a children's program. So uh, we kicked that off, I think, uh, February maybe. Uh, this year, you know, we're, we're trying to start small. Mm -hmm. um, Although I'm sure Kim would say it's not small, but um, and Kim, uh, what Kim's last name? Kim Arneo. Yes, is, is the lead for that. Is the mm -hmm. master gardener who is heading up that program. That and she's a job. she's a all about sustainability, so she really knows her stuff. Yes, right. She is excellent, and yes. she's excellent with the kids. She's a good teaching uh, mm -hmm. pro person. Um, so we actually started, and the group we're working with this year is the homeschool kids. We, we had some connections mm -hmm. uh, within the organization to the homeschool network. Mm -hmm. So the homeschool kids in Benton County is the, the group that we're working with. Um, there's about 40 kids wow. right now participating. I think she's had four, maybe five, uh, one hour um, teaching sessions on stuff and and actually it was kind of cool with this being the first group mm -hmm. doing that they actually got to build their own beds so oh. th they were out there in february with drills and and uh, impact wrenches and they built their own beds they helped put the soil in it um they planted a lot of, we did a lot of um they did seed planting mm -hmm. took them home uh in march those are all out in the garden now. Um, we've got three beds. These are 16 foot beds. They're good size beds. Three beds uh, with all their plants in them right now. And I, if not 100%, at least 90% of all that was stuff they planted and brought, brought back uh, and did it. Um, it's gonna continue. They're their beds. Uh, we're looking for them as we go forward into the summer to be the primary people who do the weeding, the watering. Mm -hmm and then the harvesting and I think it's going to be really cool that when it gets to the harvesting part um, we're, we're looking to set up a, um, one of the sessions to where they go into the food pantry and understand you know where they're giving it to mm -hmm. and who's getting the food so I mean sure. you know our our primary in, initially is you know to get them interested in gardening and mm -hmm. educate them but you know it's also a huge community thing too yeah. that they're actually contributing to the food pantry themselves. So it's just a neat, neat program yep. all around. Oh, they should be. I'm sure they're more <laughs> interested in the food now than they were before. I mean, maybe not homeschoolers so much because I think they get a lot of hands-on, but children in general need to know that although Walmart is awesome, that's not where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. You know? What do you think, right. Tony? I, I agree. Uh, you know, education is the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, starting them out young, I think, is extremely important. Uh, learning where food comes from, uh, getting involved in the process. Um, you know, uh, you know, the the generation uh, right before me, they 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 uh, they coined the phrase "victory gardens," and there was a reason people had gardens in their backyard, and they sustained us uh, as a country in some pretty rough times. And, uh, you know, hopefully we don't ever have to go through anything like that again. But uh, we, I still think that, uh, uh, you know, the more people that, uh, that are 
raising their own food products, uh, I think is I think it's a good idea. One other thing I want to uh, touch on uh, on the gardens also that should increase productivity this year is uh, something and that we didn't have last year. We initiated a formal spray program. It's an, a basic organic spray program, uh, so we're not using any harmful chemicals or anything. Uh, and it's an alternating uh, thing. Terry has uh, got some co-chairs that are heading that up. And um, so uh, there'll be a little less crop damage uh, than uh, there was a year ago, so that should increase productivity as well. So between the irrigation and a spray program and more beds, uh, uh, it should really be a banner year. And uh, I'm excited. Oh, we should be. And you know, we have a new county agent, Ryan Neal. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is pretty easy to remember because it was Neil before. Yeah, yeah. But at any rate, Ryan, his family is all about berries. So, wow, did that work out okay? Yeah. Has yeah. he been out there quite He's a bit? He's been out there, and, and he. I was talking to him yesterday. You know, we have some iron deficiencies, he thinks. So mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll get those taken care of. But, yeah, he's a big <coughs> asset. Um, we have a new member who joined um, Master Gardeners this year who – is an entomologist yes. who that was her schooling and that's what she did for 20 25 years mm -hmm. and so she's actually one of the big helpers on the spraying program yep. Yep. she understands past yep. the beneficials and all that so um, we're hoping to spread her knowledge first of all throughout the master gardener people who are in the garden mm -hmm. and then that will hopefully then go out to the community also as, as right. they Right. increase their knowledge. So. You know, we've been talking about the Helping Hands Garden. Um, where's it located anyway? So hopefully people know Helping Hands, the, the thrift store, it's Bentonville, D Street. I think it's 2602 D Street in Bentonville. It's kind of, if you know where the municipal airport, not the regional airport, but the municipal airport mm -hmm. is, it's on the same road there. It's actually if you're going down Walton Boulevard, when you get to Tractor Supply, you want to take a turn. There you go. Yep. And you'll get there. Yep. And isn't it across from the DMV or the uh, there, the motor uh, where you yep. get your license renewed? Yep. Right. That's yeah, on yeah. D Street also. Yeah. So, yeah exactly. Right. And, and the gardens are just right out back. Yeah. They're, they're the north side of the building. Now there's going to be an opportunity for people to come and see that, isn't there? There is. Yeah. We are you certainly... Are you going to tell them about it? I know you are in <laughs> oh, just I a am. minute. Okay. Yes, you are because we, the Master Gardeners, we do so much. Yes, we, we do. do. Yes, we we're, do. We're proud of it. Is it okay to be proud of ourselves? I, you I'm think proud. so? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Tony. Uh, first of all, I want to ask Terry one more thing. What if one of our viewers or any of these folks wanted to come out and take a look or even volunteer to help? Could they do that? Yeah. So, first of all, the garden's there 24-7. Yes. And we're not restricting people from it. Um, the, our preference would be, we're out there a lot. I'm out there at least twice a week, mm -hmm. maybe more. And uh, because um, the way we do the 37 beds that we have, um, a lot of them have a bed owner from the um, Master Gardener organization. So uh, there's people, most of the bed owners are out there a couple times a week. So the, the preference would be uh, if you let us know you want to come out, we'll meet you out there mm -hmm. and can kind of give you a guided tour, let you know what we're doing. And I think your telephone number is on the screen right now, too. So, hey, <laughs> yeah, that's, call Terry. <laughs> that's my number, and I'll be glad to talk to people. Um, and, you know, we do, uh, once we get into June, July, August, there's going to be quite a bit of harvesting going on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did it last year a couple times by myself, 20 beds. It's, depending on what you got out there, um, the, when we had some um, bush beans going, um, a couple beds of those, it, it took more than an hour for a person to get through the whole yeah. garden, yeah. you know. So if you like harvesting vegetables, let us know. We'll let you know what day we're going to, you know, usually in the summer it's like three days a week. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know what day of the week we're going to be out there, and we'd love to have you come help that's, us that's, harvest. That's right. Um, and, you know, going forward, if people have interest, we're, we're looking at um, – expanding more into the community to have uh, people who aren't master gardeners mm -hmm. um, have beds if, if 
there's enough interest in that. There you go. Okay, Tony, you were, uh, you were mentioning something earlier. Uh, we have another project going on that right. the proceeds from it will fund or help fund Helping Hands Garden. You want to tell us about our home tour project? Uh, I wasn't prepared for that, but I'll, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, uh, as much as I know, Benton County Master Gardeners is uh, sponsoring a uh, garden tour uh, of four homes mm -hmm. uh, and the Helping Hands Vegetable Garden. Exactly. And that's one of, one of them on the tour. That's right. one of the right. five stops. Mm -hmm. And the date on that, it's a, this is it. The 10th of June. 10th of June. Right. And so I think on, a, online right now we have ways to get Saturday. tickets. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go. Go to askmastergardenertour.com. Mm -hmm. All the information is there. Uh, and uh, you know what the proceeds are going to. It's a great cause. Uh, so you'll see uh, four. I'm familiar with all four of the homes they're going to. And there's something to be learned from each one. In addition to just walking the homes and, uh, and seeing pretty flowers, uh, uh, there will be uh, master gardeners talking on different topics at different times at each one of the homes, uh, plus handout literature on different topics. So right. it's not just uh, a walk and gawk type thing, you know. Uh, so that's one aspect of it. Then, <coughs> Uh, like JB said, one of the stops is the vegetable gardens at Helping Hands. Mm. And there again, there will be, uh, you know, a Monica will be there. You know, she'll be talking about bugs. And, uh, and we'll have people talking about fertilization and different cultivars and various things. Uh, I'm going to be talking to people about soil prep, which, you know, you know various amendments for healthy soil for vegetable gardens. Uh, so it'll be an information gathering uh, uh, day. And um, so uh, we look forward to a lot of people coming out for that. We hope we have really nice weather for it. Yes, these, these homes that are they're opening, they're beautiful. Yes, all four. And this really yeah. does help get an overview to the public for the Helping Hands Garden. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Is it ready? Sort of? It's getting uh. ready. <laughs> it, it was pretty ready and then yesterday we tore up a fair amount of the ground for some irrigation, so yeah. so yeah. we'll we'll have to be finishing that up in the next week. Once we get that done, I think we're pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what, guys? I think we need to start talking a little bit about what we need to do in June for the garden. Yep. So let's just kind of start talking about that. First of all, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about annuals. Uh, that's It's kind of the last chance to get them out. It's going to start getting really hot, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who knows with this weather around here, but it's going to get really hot. June tomorrow. Yes, you're absolutely <laughs> right. And, you know, the thing that is the hardest, in fact, is I told somebody this morning I need to have a deadheading party at my house. Uh, I'll furnish you. the wine, and you get out there and deadhead those plants so they'll keep blooming again. But you need to, to uh, pinch them back, too, to keep them from getting tall and spindly. Uh, Terry, what do you do for herbs in June? Well, herbs, uh -huh. first of all, if you haven't finished planting, your, your window's getting kind of small. You need to get that done. <laughs> um, and again, as you mentioned, pinching back. Mm -hmm. uh, any of the flowering herbs, if you don't want them setting seeds, you need to pinch them back. And June and July is time to harvest the garlic if you planted it last October. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, bulbs, Tony. What do you do for your bulbs in June? Uh, what do you do for bulbs? <laughs> 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 I, I don't plant many bulbs. In well, you June. do those daffodils and... Uh, what yeah. are they, where, what are they doing right now? So let's educate people about uh, well, what not the, to the, do. The, yeah, if you have daffodil tops that are still there, uh, yeah, you can cut them to the ground now mm -hmm. if you wish. Uh, they need six weeks. Any any spring bulb mm -hmm. needs uh, uh, after the bloom fades. It needs uh, six weeks to regenerate the bulb. So it's like recharging a battery. Uh, so think of that bulb as a lithium battery that is, <laughs> needs to be recharged. Uh, and the way you do that is, is you snip the flower off, but you leave all the foliage, mm -hmm. and you let Mother Nature and the sun re recharge through the green foliage. Uh, after six weeks, uh, you're safe to cut off as much as you want. 
Um, if um, what I do with the really, really tall daffodil things is uh, they're standing up, uh, I, I just tie them down even to the ground. I just get little pieces of jute and tie them and then eventually that foliage just dissolves and vanishes as, as does the little jute string. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, so you use that's something an easy, that's simple, biodegradable. Yeah, real yeah. simple, easy way to do it. Okay. Um, and then uh, and start preparing for fall bulbs, you know, and that's if this coming fall is when we want to think about, <coughs> excuse me, our daffodil yeah. uh, bulbs. Uh, and uh, you want, we want to start uh, getting those in the ground in October, November, December. Okay. Yeah. Well, and then your perennials, like daylilies. I don't know. Do you have daylilies? Yeah, I have Mine day are lilies. blooming like crazy yeah, right yeah. now. Uh, different daylilies bloom mm -hmm. at different times. you got early and mid and mm -hmm. late season uh, bloomers. But just keep them uh, deadheaded. Yep. And, uh, and during the blooming season, uh, uh, you know, they need a little, a little feeding once a month because uh, yep. it takes a lot of energy to produce those beautiful flowers. So... While they're in that flowering mode, uh, you know, keep in mind once a month, uh, give them a little reward. Okay. Yeah. So, Terry, what do we do for our lawns in June? Oh, okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Tony's better with lawns all right. than me. <laughs> then anybody tell us about, I wrote down a T word and it's... Uh, yeah, well, you had T, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lawns. Uh, uh, we like to keep you Now's the toes. time to raise that mower height. Okay, we got... Uh, Now's the time to raise that mower height. Uh, yeah, you know, you, sh you should never get below two and a half inches. Uh, three is good. If we hit one of those summers, I hope we don't, like we had a few years back where it was triple digits for weeks and no rain, uh, you could even go to four. But uh, the reason you want to go higher is for several reasons. Uh, one is the more green that's on top, you have the equal amount of roots below. So it means the roots are going deeper, okay? They're, they're chasing the water. If the top is shallow, the roots are gonna be shallow, you're gonna have some damage from heat and drought, okay? That's one thing. The other thing is that the taller the foliage, the cooler it keeps the surface of the ground, okay? So it keeps it cooler. Uh, helps prevent more, more evaporation and that sort of thing. Leave your clippings on the ground. You know, if you'll, uh, you know, we, we grew up in an era when every lawnmower had a grass catcher, but I will tell you, s since that day, even though there are still mowers out there with grass catchers on them, okay, every turf specialist at every major university mm -hmm. in America will tell you, leave your clippings on the ground. So my argument is 20 million lawn specialist professors can't all be wrong. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So, <laughs> okay, uh, having, having said that, it's also a good time to do your mid-season fertilizing uh, of your lawn now, just prior to the stress season coming up, the hot, dry season coming. Now's a good time to, to do a nice mild fertilization, water it in really good and prepare it for the next 90 days in front of it. What about roses? Uh, roses, uh, uh, you know, roses, if you have uh, roses that only bloom in the spring, you wanna feed them as soon as they're through blooming. If you have uh, uh, floribundas that bloom all summer long like knockouts, you wanna feed them once a month because again, it takes a lot of energy to produce all those flowers. So you want to feed once a month. You want to keep them deadheaded. Yes. You want to keep an eye out for black spot. Uh, I have a program that I do. That I don't have black spot programs. Uh, some people scoff at it, but uh, the people at Texas A&M Ag Department, uh, they've got papers written on the subject, and I go out every Sunday, and I dust my roses with cornmeal because cornmeal is a natural fungicide and uh, <clears throat> that kills the spores that are in the soil so they never come up and create the black spots to begin with. So, that is something I've got to remember <clears throat> for well, sure. I do it every Sunday, go out with my little cup of coffee after breakfast and 
scatter your cornmeal. Sprinkle my little cornmeal <laughs> on my roses, and it's not a problem for me. Okay. If you have a if you have a black spot problem, uh, contact me because there are other things that that, that, you can that do. we can do. Uh, but uh, it's a great time for roses. The roses love uh, north, the northern part of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. They love it up here. Uh, if you drive around town, roses, uh, everybody's rose, that make a difference. Well, they all look great right now. Yeah. But to keep them looking good, keep them deadheaded, keep them fertilized, and make sure that uh, they don't dry out. Okay. So, Terry, now it's your turn for sure. How about trees and shrubs? What, what do we do for them in June? Um, any dead limbs you want to prune out, get all the, the dead stuff out. Um, got any blooming shrubs, now's a good time to fertilize those. And then you always have to watch the watering as it gets into summer. If we get a dry period, um, trees and shrubs, they like a soaking uh, watering. So you do that on a somewhat regular basis as long as it's dry. So. Excellent. And then there's those vegetables and boy, there's a lot of work and you've talked about how much work is going on. In June, you start harvesting, uh, you're already harvest. are you harvesting any of the cold weather crops we, already? Yeah, we've got, and I didn't add it up before I came in today, I should have, we've, we've harvested quite a bit. We had spinach, radishes, we had some cauliflower, some broccoli. So all that we got, uh, probably over 20 pounds already. That will be taken out in the next week or so. It's probably most of that's wrapping up. Okay. And then we'll come in behind with some of the hotter weather stuff. So we can still do tomatoes, peppers. All that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, I think we're uh, kind of rounding up the program here now. So if you have any other questions at all about gardening in June, what I recommend that you do is go to the Master Gardener website and I believe that is on the, the, the Garden Club website is on the screen now. That's another good source of things. Uh, but also to the Benton County Gardening.org website. Oh, there's a brochure for everything there that yep. you can imagine. And before I sign off and thank my guests today, I, I would like to remind you um, as a, an advocate for Bella Vista a Community Television that we do have our SWAN campaign going on right now. So any of you SWAN customers or any of you that would like to try it out, they're giving us back a percentage from uh, for the next month. We're about halfway through the campaign and they will give us 20% of what your order is. Doesn't cost you a thing order uh, uh, in addition, uh, but that's helping us raise funds for this all-volunteer organization. In addition to that, Amazon Smile any of you that shop through Amazon, Amazon also gives us a contribution. So we're an all-volunteer organization. We probably could use some new equipment, I think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do is, Tony, thank you so much for everything you've done over the last two years uh, as our president. Well, it's been... One of the highlights has been working with Terry on this, on this <laughs> Helping Hands Garden. Oh. Yeah. But so we want to see a big crowd from Benton County come out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and if you're in Washington County, you can come up to it. Right, we won't right. kick you out. But, uh, you know, uh, come see these gardens. They're, they're pretty spectacular and see what we're doing. And it's a, it, it's, it's a great program because uh, when you see the recipients of the product, you'll understand why we're motivated. Exactly. And Terry, thank you so much. I'm so proud of everything you've done, and I'm hoping you're going to do this next year too, right? We'll see. We'll okay. See. The garden will be there. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> You'll how be much there I'm too. Doing. You'll okay. be there too. Thank you all today. We appreciate you viewing us, and don't forget to smell the roses, especially if you've taken care of them with the black yeah, spot take remedy. Take care of your roses. Thank you. <laughs>